Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. Audio only spaces is one of the best things that really came out of all this madness during this pandemic times. And I definitely want to say that one of the most enjoyable social media experiences I've had was my time on Clubhouse when it first came out. And since then, a lot of copycats have come into the space. There has been Spotify's Green Room, Fireside, which is that app by Mark Cuban. And most successfully recently, especially in this NFT space, is the Twitter Spaces. And that has really taken off as far as where communities are meeting, as far as uh, what's going on in these NFT projects and what the founders are having, the town halls, all of those things are really held on Twitter Spaces. However, have you ever been in a space that just really did not make you feel so great? Whether there were too many people on the speaking stage and the host was moving them along like cattle or they were just jumping from people without acknowledging things, whatever it might be. Today, we're going to discuss how you can avoid being caught up like cattle in that culture in these different spaces. So I was in a room the other day that I absolutely love. The host usually has some great content and the guests that come in, the information that is passed over the stages, I always enjoy it. So I pop into them very regularly. However, sometimes it does feel like people are being pushed along like cattle. And the other day, for example, there was an elderly lady that was in the room and the way she was just rushed off the stage, it really didn't feel good. And I understand why it is done, because in this day and age, the Vine culture, if you're not familiar with that Vine app, that was the original short video app, then it went to Instagram, TikTok, and now even YouTube has shorts because people have a very short attention span. So a lot of times these hosts are playing into the algorithm, if you will, or the attention span of people, knowing very well that they love to see change. So they don't want one speaker to stay on stage too long because let's say you're in a very big room with say hundreds of people. What you notice is the longer someone stays on stage, people start to trickle out because it's like stale information. So they don't want that to happen. So they always want a fresh voice on the microphone. That way people just feel like they have to stay in the room. Now, if you even want proof of that, like people's attention span and what have you, is if you look at Mr. Beast YouTube, which I'm not even really a big watcher of his content, but I do see different things just for the simple fact that I know he's by far the most successful YouTuber. And one of the things that he does is within the first 30 seconds or 45 seconds of his videos, he he has multiple scene cuts. Why is that? Because it keeps people's attention. And even someone who is coming from the corporate world doing different sales presentations and PowerPoints, I know that the longer a slide is up, the more likely you are to lose your audience. So even when we're doing PowerPoint presentations, we try to change the slide as much as possible. Sometimes even every two, three seconds, because we know that people's attentions are very short. The more visual stimulation, the more things that are popping up and going before their face is the longer that they're going to tune in. So the same thing, the same mentality really comes to these Twitter spaces, club stages and all that, the rooms, I should say. So when people are on the stage or in the speaker's uh, position, they just want that fast flowing room. So going back to that elderly lady that was in the room, I was really excited to see uh, her, first of all, because it's not that you see that many people in this NFT space there that are of that generation. However, this is someone that was really interested in the space and she had value to add. But as we know, sometimes elderly people are slow in speaking. They draw out their uh, sayings and their stories and they like to repeat themselves. So yes, I understand from a host perspective. Yes, let's keep that moving. However, as a human being, just seeing someone up in that position, I think of, let's say if it were my mother or my grandmother or my aunt or someone, it, it just left a little awkward feeling for me. But But again, as I said, I totally understand the statistics and the uh, algorithm and all that reason, like the actual analytics as to why someone would do that. But just from a human standpoint, just seeing what that would feel like, it really didn't feel good to me personally. And even I've been in a situation where I've been on stage and I've presented and it's like the host or whoever was up there didn't even acknowledge what I was saying. I might have contributed something and there was no response or anything. It was just on to the next one. And honestly, it does not feel good. However, I've learned not to take anything personal, whether it is online or offline. But at the same time, for whatever reason, 
reason when I see it happen to someone else, I feel a certain way about that. I'm more likely to take it personal when it happens to someone else than when it happens to me. So today we're going to discuss different ways that you can prepare yourself from being in one of these situations so that way you're not rushed along and prodded along like cattle. And first of all, when you go into one of these rooms, it's just get a general feeling of the conversation. You want to know how the host is running the stage, switching between speakers. So is this a fast moving room? Is this a casual conversation? Is this a raise the hand room? Is this a popcorn style where people are just on and off with their mic and they could jump in at any time? Or are people being moved down after their question? How exactly is this room flowing? Also, to understand the topic of the room, what they're actually trying to accomplish, and the way that these questions are being swayed or presented, and the facts or comments that are being given, just to understand how this room is really set up, and most importantly, the audience, how they're interacting and how they're enjoying this, because all their expectations are to keep that audience engaged in there. So if you're not someone who is contributing to that and adding to that, they're quickly willing to move you along. So to understand all those different things, all those aspects, will greatly help you when you actually get up there ready to speak. And the thing that I recommend to do more than anything is to write down what you're going to say. Not exactly word for word so you get up there and it sounds like you're reading a script, but just have some bullet points or some points that you would like to make, whether it is a question or it is a comment to something a previous speaker said, especially if you want to drop a name because a great way to interact with people on stage or other people, make them feel acknowledged and present is by saying their name. So let's say so-and-so had a comment. You know, I really like what... Mr. Whatever or Miss So-and-so said, and I would like to add to that and then say what you have to say. That is a great way to just engage with everyone and interact and be not necessarily in a position to be rushed off and kicked to the corner as quick as possible. But Also, it is very important to stay on topic. So many times I see someone get up there and whether it is they start shilling their product or their project or they start talking about something that is completely irrelevant or something that was already covered in the space in hour one and now we're on hour four and they don't want to go back to that topic or whatever it might be or something that the subject was just squashed because it said, you know what, we spent way too long on this, let's move on. And then the speaker goes up next and wants to ask a question on that exact topic. So a lot of times the host is going to shut that down and just move it along and say, no, we're not going to talk about that right now. So just understanding what the topic is and staying in line with that. And it's a good idea too to have a backup, right? So if someone goes before you, you raise your hand or whatever it is, you get up on stage and let's say there's two speakers ahead of you, you have your thing, your bullet points, your points that you want to make, then someone gets up there and says exactly what you're going to say. It's nice to have just a backup point or another comment or something. That way, if you get called on the mic, you're not like a deer in headlights just caught with nothing to say because we all have anxiety and uh, different issues and I don't care how comfortable you are talking or whatever it is even I when I get up on the stage it's like what I was going to say just starts to run from my head and so definitely having these bullet points to keep the train on the tracks as I like to say is a great thing otherwise my mind will take the train down a dirt road and it will be way off of topic and that is just how my mind runs goes all over the place so I like to have those bullet points just to keep things in line and even when I'm doing these podcasts, I don't script out word for word everything that I'm going to say. But what I like to do, as I said, is just have those bullet points. So I know that these four or five topics is what I want to go through in this order. So when I go off onto a tangent like I'm on right now, this is nowhere on my notes or on my papers or anything. I know that once I'm done with this little segment, I just look down back at the paper, the bullet points, and I get back on track. And in this case, it's going to take me to the various things that you could do to help this process. And it is condensed sensing the ideas of whatever it is that you want to say, because as I've just demonstrated is you'll have these bullet points, you'll have something that you want to say, but you're going to go off. So we all have a motor mouth syndrome, if you will. When we get nervous, we start talking, we speed up. And what should have taken 10 seconds might end up taking 10 minutes. It's like, wait, how did I get there? And those are the people that are cut off and rushed off. And it just becomes awkward for not only them, but the host and all the people in the audience. So just understanding that what you might have down, you have to condense it down to its purest form and allow yourself that time and that leisure or that runway, if you will, to just get off topic a little bit and just ramble for a second or two might double the amount of things that you actually wanted to say, because that's just human nature. That is how things work. 
and also preparing yourself mentally to open up the mic and start speaking. What I like to do, and I highly recommend it, this is just a great anxiety management technique. And whether you are someone who suffers with anxiety or not, but definitely getting ready to speak on a microphone is going to induce anxiety for just about everyone in the world. Did you know that the number one fear in the world is public speaking? In surveys consistently every single year, people rank that more than death. Like they would rather die than go up and make a speech before an auditorium or an audience. And although you're sitting at the comfort of your home or in your vehicle or wherever it is, and it might be you are the only one there, just looking down on the phone and knowing that there's at least two, three, four other people, or in a case of a large room, thousands of people listening, that is going to induce some anxiety. So what I like to do before I get on the mic is do my slow breathing breath works. Something as simple as that and just keep repeating it. Let's say four seconds in, eight seconds out or doubling it, whatever, five seconds in, 10 seconds out, something of that nature. For a period of time over and over, it slows down the heart rate, it lowers the anxiety, gets you nice and calm, ready to speak. And every time when I'm getting ready to go up on a stage and say my piece or whatever it might be, interact with the host or uh, throw something out there for the audience to hear, I always do that. And Yes, sometimes when I get up there, I'm still nervous. However, if I didn't do that, my level of anxiety and my nervousness would be multiples more than that. So I highly recommend doing that. But before you even start, just getting everything in line. So when you get up there, it is just much more comfortable for you and everyone else in the room. And last thing I will say as far as that, as far as preparing to go up there, is just tell yourself that you're not going to take anything personal because the way someone rushes you off the stage or just moves on from her comment, it doesn't feel good. However, just know that is the reflection of the host and it's not a reflection of you because sometimes I've seen some people drop the most groundbreaking share and it is just wow. And I'm sitting there in the audience like with my jaw on the floor and then the host says, okay, next up is... And it's like, wait a minute, that person wasn't even acknowledged, especially if they're sharing something that was very vulnerable. They're sharing something about their insecurities or something horrible that happened to them in the past. However, it's like the host wasn't even paying attention to that. And just knowing that it's not the sharer, not the person, yourself or whoever it is that is at fault here, it's just the host. Remember, their goal or their mission, and a lot of times is curating that room with the fast moving pace that's going to keep an audience there. So they might be looking down in the audience or at the queue and uh, trying to bring up their next point, writing notes or whatever it might be, and not necessarily even listening to the current speaker. So when they get back on and say, okay, up next is, it's honestly, it's not even like necessarily they're trying to disrespect you all the time. It's just that they were on another mission or maybe while their mic was muted, their child ran into the room or whatever it might be. So just knowing that and not taking it personal can really help you in a long way because I've seen so many people that uh, have been in that situation or in later rooms and smaller rooms and say, wow, when I was in such and such's room, like I was totally dismissed and it made me feel horrible and I didn't speak on spaces again or in clubhouse again for six months until this room. I've been in so many different spaces or rooms on clubhouse where people say that it's like, wow, like you were affected that much, but because they were in this now welcoming open space, they were willing to try it again and they were received with open arms. And with that, Instead of trying to fit into that culture, sometimes it is great to just create your own culture, create your own space. And all it really takes is finding one person with the same values of you, a like-minded person to open up a space. Because a space or a room on Clubhouse, all it is a conversation. It starts off with two people and then it grows to more. It is very hard to start a room by yourself. I've tried it multiple times on both platforms. And what tends to happen is people pop in, see if a conversation is going on, and then they run out. So if you are actually there with just one other person and you're having a conversation, just like you're on the phone, except this is a public line, everyone can join in, that's when people will stick around and then even raise their hand or make that request to come up and speak on the stage or uh, whatever it is they want to contribute. And think of it just like an open room. You and a friend are speaking and people are walking by and what you're saying catches their attention and they might lurk around or they might say, hey, I hear what you guys are talking about. Do you mind if I say something? And that's what these rooms are really like. 
But when you have your own space, especially knowing that what it was like for you to go through this, and especially if you've had a negative experience, just not creating that same experience within your space is very important. Allow others to feel welcome, a part of the conversation. Don't rush them off like those cattle trying to just keep those numbers. Because remember, that is what got you away from those other rooms and into starting your own room, especially after your room starts to grow and you have some buzz and and people start to come in regular. Don't lose sight of that and just maintain and foster that same culture for the reason why you started that room. And if anyone ever comes on the stage that doesn't want to have that same culture of respect and sharing with each other and treating each other in that same way, there's nothing wrong with muting them or bumping them back to the audience or whatever it might be. There's You don't want to facilitate them to hijack your stage to make this another just horrible space and make people feel awkward and horrible. So if someone goes up there, they're using profane language, they're saying inappropriate comments, whatever it might be, you're not the rude person for kicking them down. And I've been in countless spaces, some of the nicest hosts in the world that felt like they were being rude by doing that and they allowed someone to hijack their space and it just brought down the room. So with that said, It's no different than being around an abusive or a toxic person. In real life, you would walk away. You can shut it down, kick that person down. And if they don't like it, oh, well, they will leave and bring their toxicity and their hate somewhere else. Now, I'm not going to abuse this and just if someone disagrees with you, kick them down. No, but what I'm saying is if someone is creating a unfriendly environment or whatever it might be, just ruining the space and really going against the goals that you would like to foster within that space. It is up to you as the host, the curator of that room, to then reset the culture and send that person down to the audience. So with that said, I think that's a great place to just land the plane. And I would like to know, What has your experience been like in Twitter spaces or in clubhouse rooms? Have you ever encountered any of these things that I said? And if you're someone who would like to have one of those positive, great vibes rooms, and you're looking for someone to uh, co-host with you, have a conversation about some of these topics, whether it is uh, NFTs, Web3, crypto, blockchain, or just life and mental health, managing anxiety in the space, I'm game for that. So if you ever want to reach out to me, on Twitter at Tropic Vibes, please let me know and we'll work out something with our schedule and I'd be more than happy to let you host it and I'll just get up there, have a conversation with you and once the room grows or whatever it might be, uh, tap out and there you go. You're off to the races and you can have your own room, your own space and have a great time. So with that said, thank you for listening as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.